This seems like a fairly big blow. Would it be? Most welcome. Would you would you call that a big blow as far as real estate developers are concerned? What are the implications <clears throat> of this order? Uh, clearly, this ruling will have very far-reaching implications. But let's take a step back. Uh, the Supreme Court in 2005 had passed a ruling in Raheja's case and passed a ruling in a very uh, fact pattern where in southern India, uh, the contracting structure for real estate transactions had a dual uh, structure model. And on that structure, the Supreme Court held that VAT will apply. Uh, in, uh, in other parts of India, there was a different contracting structure, which is you would have an agreement to sell uh, on booking an apartment. And after the uh, apartment is ready, then there would be a sale deed in your favor. The general understanding uh, in northern India and eastern India was that VAT will not apply to the latter set of transactions because what is indeed sold to you is an immobile property. And now what the Supreme Court ruling does is does two things. One is it, uh, it affirms this Raheja Supreme Court ruling. So that to that extent, whatever is the practice that's been going on in southern India remains and continues to these transactions continue to apply tax. But the more complicated part would be that it has overturned the principle of no tax being applied on the one contract model. And therefore, this is going to come in as a very big blow to most, par most developers in other parts of the country which had taken a who have taken a tax position not to pay VAT on the transaction by treating it to be an immobile property one. Uh, and you did mention a 5% rate of tax. In some states, the number may go up a little bit higher. And therefore, if we look at that percentage on a top line of a company, for five to six, uh, for six to eight years, that indeed is going to be extremely worrisome and uh, uh, have a very uh, significant impact on their operations and net worth itself. That's an important point you make because this goes back retrospectively. So we are talking of thousands of crores here. Absolutely, I think. Uh, th I mean, let's 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 just understand the concept of retrospective. The Supreme Court has just. Uh, interpreted the law and therefore it automatically has a retrospective impact. This is not a retrospective amendment, uh, but it's a clarification which has a retrospective impact. And yes, indeed, this is going to go back several years. So what does this call for? This probably calls for the real estate industry coming together, making forth a case uh, with the tax authorities and the respective governments to say that, okay, we respect the Supreme Court ruling, but is there a way that we could, for the past period, have you know, a, a, a kind of a composition rate or something like that so that there's clarity on the ground as well as to how much of taxes need to be paid and the number that goes in is not a very high and, uh, you know, a, a number that will really potentially, you know, uh, close down several large real estate players.